At this point of time, I want you to prepare your hearts unto the Lord as we come to the message from the Word of God. <clears throat> and it is found in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, where it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The 12th chapter of Roman begins a new division of the book. And it is here Paul takes the great soteriological, soter theological, when, when we said soteriolic, soteriological, it, it is a study of salvation. And the truth of chapter 1 to chapter 11 applies them to everyday life. It is here where Paul links propitiation, propitiation, and practicality, redemption, and response, salvation, and service. We know that preachers of old used to say the gospel has a believing side and a and a behaving sign. Believing and behaving. Here Paul describes for us conduct rather than creed. Deeds rather than doctrine. Here is bottom line religion. This behaving side of the gospel is a description of the submissive life of the believer or the submission of the believer's life. And our text addresses four aspects of that submissive life. What is the behaving sign of the gospel? And what is the submissive life? Please know that four things that we need to consider. Number one is the petition for a submissive life. Number two, the price or priority of submissive life. And then number three, the procedure for a submissive life. And then the purpose of a submissive life. Petition. Ito po yung petition. Actually, in verse 1, it is very clear where it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That is the petition. We know that the behaving side of the gospel includes the burden of the petition. You know here, the, the word Paul uses for beseech means parakolo, indicates that this petition is both urgent and personal. This call from God is an urgent appeal requiring personal application. Paul is literally saying like this, I beg you to come alongside me and take a stand for the gospel. Of course, in King James Version, he was beseeching. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. We could hear the, the burden of the petition. Remember that uh, we have to... Uh, like what I said that Paul is literally saying, I beg you to come alongside me and take a stand for the gospel. 
Remember, the hour is late and our responsibility is great. Amen. The hour is late. Like in our lessons, we in our Sunday school lesson, we're discussing on the Christian on the last days. And we could see that uh, many churches in our time today are falling. Many preachers are falling. And many uh, uh, churches are uh, dying. And we could see that the hour is late. And our responsibility is great. Meaning, Christian, that's why the burden of the petition, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I beg you, brethren, he says, that this time is no time for half-hearted devotion to Christ. Someone has said that the times are desperate, but we are not. True Christianity is not merely a set of beliefs, but rather it is the set, it is the uh, the life of Christ lived out in the submissive lives of believers. God, uh, the, the 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 petition for a submissive life, the burden of the uh, petition that. Apostle Paul was beseeching the brethren that by the mercies of God that let us submit our lives to God. For what purpose? Remember, this was the burden of Paul's this was the burden of Paul's heart. And then not only the burden of the petition, but notice here the basis of the petition. He said, he was beseeching, I beseech you. Therefore, brethren, and he also says, the base of the petition is by the mercies of God. Sa kahabagan ng ating Panginoon. Therefore, he said, therefore is the hinge upon which swings the door, opening the way. From the declaration of truth to the demonstration of truth. Amen. Christian. Therefore, observation of which Paul has written in Romans. And therefore, of sanctification lead to the therefore of submission unto service. But who are submitting themselves to the service of God? For many are called, yes, you are chosen. For many are heard, but you are responding. Christian, Paul has written in Romans, and the therefore of sanctification lead to the to the therefore of submission and service. Paul calls this the mercies of God. Sa kahabagan ng Panginoon, does the love of God constrain us? Does the love of God constrain you? Does the love of God constrain us to submit our lives to Him? Mas kabisado niyo pa yung you you memorize yung ano to yung sumikat na line in TFC right kaibig-ibig ba ako remember that but listen we could see here that the pain passion and parts of the cross call us to full submission. Remember the song at Calvary, right? Yung song na, Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty. At Calvary. It is by
by his mercies that we are not consumed. His mercies are new every morning, as what the Bible says. They are new every morning. For what reason? Because of the faithfulness of God in our lives. Now listen. By the wounds of the cross, Christ claims the right to be our Lord. And then number two, Paul then addresses the price or priority of a submissive life. You see, verse 1 again, here is what God says. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now notice here that Paul uses graphic analogy of a sacrifice to describe the price or priority of a submissive life. Please uh, note the living sacrifice described. It is what? A living sacrifice, it is a consecrated. Now the word consecrated means to devote or to dedicate. You see, that's why when we said if a, a consecrated is to devote or to dedicate, it means he used the word here in the verse that we just read, present. Amen? Present is the same word use of the Levitical priest in his presentation of the sacrificial offering before the Lord. This consecrated sacrifice is a given over completely and entirely sacrifice. Given completely and entirely. Talagang walang ano. Meaning to say when, when it is given, hindi chinap yung part of the body then. And you know when when we present our our lives unto the Lord, we want the whole thing. Amen. We want you. He he want you. He want your all to be presented, to be dedicated, to be consecrated before the Lord. Not concentrated, but consecrated. Now listen. Remember that it is in the eros or uh, eros tense implying a definite decisive action of submission. <coughs> the lambs offered were completely consumed by the sacrificial fire. Diba? When it is offered by the Levitical priests, the whole and the entire sacrifice was consumed. Consecrated sacrifice. Do not talaga that it was designed to, to sacrifice. Kaya ang sabi ng plano, present your body, our bodies, a living sacrifice. Not when, not when we are old. Not when we are sickly. Not when, uh, when, we are all, when we are only available. And sometimes we only give passion. God does not need passion. When we consecrate ourselves before the Lord, when we consecrate, uh, consecrate our life uh, uh, before the Lord, he, he, he was not asking or He is not asking part of your time, part of your life, part of your body. He wants the whole thing. Like the Be Levitical priests, when they offered the sacrifice, they offered the whole and the entire sacrifice before the Lord. And sometimes... What we give to the Lord is just only partial. Hulugan pa. Now listen. A consecrated life. The living sacrifice described. It is a consecrated sacrifice. And then another thing. It is a complete sacrifice. You see. Sabi ng body ng Panginoon. Your bodies. A living sacrifice. Sometimes we condition God with, Lord, if I am retired, 
I will start serving you. What if you didn't eat, if you didn't reach your retirement? Then what happened to your service? Right? And sometimes, Lord, when I have now notice here, your bodies are living sacrifice. This is the practical aspect of our submissive lives. The only avenue, because this is the only avenue through which God can reveal himself to our lives. This address the dualism of the platonic thought that characterized the day. The dualism uh, allowed a person to believe rightly and behave differently because the body was considered evil and incapable of honoring God. Much of that thought exists today where we believe the world but behave like the world. Right? Someone has said, it doesn't require much of a man to be a Christian, but it requires all there is of him. You know, God wants a complete sacrifice. Your bodies. Of course, when we sacrifice ourselves, you want to give your life because you're already like an tao na wala yung wala ka na uh, disabled but when you are able you give all the things to the world and sometimes you didn't give extra for the Lord but notice the living sacrifice describe it is a consecrated sacrifice it is a complete sacrifice and another thing it is a clean sacrifice you see, I don't in the Bible. The same verse in verse 1. Holy, acceptable unto God. Holy, acceptable unto the Lord. Ano mong ibig sabihin ng holy? Holy speaks of purity. Amen? <clears throat> purity, the kind of unblemished quality, uh, the priest look for in the sacrifice. Actually, in the Old Testament, the priest would carefully examine the lamb's eyes, ears, mouth, feet, skin, and etc. To be sure that the sacrifices or the sacrifice he will give to the Lord is really clean and well-pleasing. That is the word accept. Do you think when you are no longer unable and you can no longer be used by God, that is an acceptable sacrifice unto the Lord? Diba? Do you think when your lifespan is just only limit in, in a year or more, then you will say, Lord, use me? When you can no longer move well, when you have lots of pain in your life because your body are being abused for, for the world purpose, not for the Lord's purpose. Now listen. The priest would carefully examine to be sure it was clean and it will it will it will and well pleasing acceptable to the lord remember holiness is not a denomination it is the mark the price priority of a submissive life the price and priority of submissive life is sin in a word and in the living sacrifice in the logical service declared. Logical service. The word Paul uses to describe the submissive life is the word from which we get out, we get our word logical. Now, 
what other response to God's love would be appropriate? The natural response of a redeemed life should be that of submissive life. You know why? Like the song says again, Jesus paid it all. Amen? All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He white. He was. It white as snow. Christian, the behaving side of the gospel calls for believers, number three, to follow the procedure for a submissive life. Ano pa? Ano susundin natin? Behaving. This is what God wants us for us to do in verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now remember, this procedure includes a prohibition. And the prohibition says, be not conformed. Be not conformed to this world. An imperative with the prohibition carries the idea of stop what you are doing. Literally, Paul is telling his readers and us to stop letting the world system determine life's values and conduct. The behaving side of the gospel is not concerned with politically correct but it is concerned with being biblically correct. Jesus said, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Amen? That's why I, I, I like the quotation that I've been using so many, many years ago. Actually, in my entire ministry, in, in my entire life in the service of the Lord, even when I was young, I read and I caught and caught this, uh, uh, this quotation, separate yourself from fellowship with the world or the world will separate you from fellowship with God. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's why friendship with this world is enmity with God. Worldliness is certainly one of the greatest problems of most of us face. Prohibition. Be not conformed to this world. This procedure for a submitted life also includes not only a prohibition, prohibition, but letter B, but a pronouncement. An a pronouncement. But be transformed. Amen? But be transformed. The word transform comes from morphe. A Greek word from which we get a metamorphosis. And this term is only found three other times in the New Testament. Number one is in Transfiguration of Christ in Matthew chapter 17 verse 2, and Mark chapter 9, verse 2, and number 2, it is used to describe the glorious change from where? From glory to glory. Rock in the believer when he steadfastly contemplates the Lord Jesus Christ as 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Remember, the submissive lives allows the believer to grow more and more in the likeness of Christ through the glorious process of what? Of sanctification. This is something God does in us as we continually submitting our lives to the Lordship of Christ. And the procedure of submissive life also includes a process. Kung kaya na a prohibition, a prohibition, 
a pronouncement be transformed and the number literacy a process by the renewing of your mind. You see, this is a process of continually focusing our minds on the things of God. One preacher once said, in, uh, in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, God's ponderless. They call it God's ponder. Here we are admonished to renew our minds. What? The Bible says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things whatsoever things are of good report. If there any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Remember, Christian, the procedure of a submissive life includes a process of constantly renewing our minds as we saturate our lives with the things of God. Amen. This is the behaving side of the gospel. And this is the submissive life. But notice finally the purpose of a submissive life. The purpose is that ye may prove. Amen. <coughs> that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It is God's desire that we enjoy life abundantly as well as eternally. Amen? Eternally. The reason believers are admonished to submit their lives to the Lord, uh, to the Lordship of Christ, so that He might bless them with what? He might bless them with heaven's, uh, he might bless heaven's richest blessings. Now the word, the word prove can be understood as understand experientially or no person God's will for us. You know, when you experience it, to, uh, to tell you honestly, it is good. Amen? Meaning, as the Bible says, it is good. Pleasant. It is a uh, letter a pleasant. Good, the Bible says. In first chapter 4, verse 10, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, If the newest the gift of God, and who is it that say to thee, Give me to drink that thou wouldest have asked of him, and who would have given thee living water? Christian, you don't have to fear submitting your life to Christ. He only wants you what is good. Amen? What is pleasing. The purpose of a submissive life is that we might discover life's very best in every aspect of life. God's will for you. So, it is important that we have to have this submissive life sa buhay natin. And it is good. And then, proper. What does this mean? It means acceptable. This submissive life is one that is well-pleasing. Amen? Well-pleasing to the Lord. It is that life of joy unspeakable and full of glory. What greater fulfillment, brethren, than know you're, you are fulfilling God's eternal purpose for your life. Christian, we can face the storms and uncertainties of life victoriously when we know God is working all things together for our good and for His glory. For the submissive lives, 
God's will acceptable. God's will is acceptable even when it is difficult. Amen? And Christian, it is acceptable even when we don't fully understand it. And the purpose of a submissive life is done that we might discover the joy and sweet peace of walking in communion with Him and in the light of His acceptable, well-pleasing will or God's will for you or for us. So brethren, God's will for you is pleasant or good, proper, acceptable, and perfect. Perfect is often translated as complete. Perfect. Complete. You define our rhythm. You know. Richard, complete. Perfect. You see, we see things on the narrow horizon of our present vision. Remember, God sees the past, the present, and the future in the context of eternity. You know, because He is God. Amen. Only a yielded, submissive life can discover God's perfect or complete will. And sometimes you cannot see it, you cannot experience it, you cannot sense it, because you did not submit yourself fully, completely, entirely to the will of God. So kung pagkasano yung will, it's hard to find it. Why? Because you never submit. And God can never give to you the whole blueprint of God's will in our life. So, God's will for you is pleasant or good, proper, acceptable, and perfect. Christian, don't fail short of God's best for you by falling or by failing to present your life as a living sacrifice unto Him. This is the behaving side of the gospel. Christian, as I conclude, there's a story here years ago. A 12-year-old girl who had lost her arms and legs to a terrible disease. Heard by Billy Graham, priest on the radio from this text, she responded, Lord, there's not much left of me, but what there is I give to you. She learned to ride the use of harness and devoted herself to sharing her faith in Christ by writing hundreds of letters, sharing the gospel. She lived to be 27 years old and, up, and after that, over 1,500, 1,500 professions of faith had been recorded through her effort. Why? She presented her bodies a living sacrifice. To whom much is given, much is required. This is the behaving side of the gospel. This submissive life. That's why the song I sing is about submission. Now think of this. Do I submit my entire life unto the Lord? Or do I entrust myself and my whole life to God? Or I just want to to, uh, to give part or partial of my life. And that's why, <clears throat> although you want to know God's will and God's plan, everything something like blurred. You know the reason why? To see you eat through a glass, clearly. All you have to do 
is learn to submit your lives and yourselves to the purpose and to the plan and to the will of God. May the Lord God bless your heart and I pray to God that the message we've heard touches our lives.